Hi, thanks for tuning in to this first video um, of my vlog series. So I decided that I will start a vlog and see where it goes. Um, so my name is Mia. It's actually not my real name, but we're gonna go with that. And I decided to start a vlog like just for fun and basically I have I've always wanted to start a vlog, but I never had the courage to do so. And also I couldn't really commit to the time and I couldn't commit to like a topic or interest that was really appealing to me. Um, I guess I just have a lot of interest. So <laughs> I guess we'll be covering all of those in my vlog. So. It's, I don't have anything specific um, that I'll be sharing, but I think it's just like, I do enjoy kind of not getting lost, but kind of like daydreaming and getting in touch with myself and just like being more aware of my, who I am and the things that I love, like exploring more of the things that I love. So that would include things like art or um, books. I want to read more this coming year. And I, I've always like found my favorite little moments were always unexpected. It's like, it's normally when I'm walking somewhere and I just find myself in a moment and it's just like, I just want to capture that moment. Um, I used to have a Facebook, but I don't really use Facebook anymore. And I used to just document little snippets of my day here and there, like write a little short story and record a moment or um, take a photo of something that I thought was beautiful. And I just posted it every day. And I didn't realize that there were people who were actually interested in that I just did it for myself and then I stopped doing it for a while I used to do it for years like I don't know five six seven years and I stopped for a while and then my friend would like text me and say hey whatever happened to this and that do you still do that anymore I was like no not really and then they're like oh we were looking forward to getting updates on this and that so I guess there's some value in it, like maybe maybe people find it kind of therapeutic or relaxing. Um, so anyway, in this first episode, I'm probably just gonna talk a little bit about whatever I'm into right now, which is books. Books and art. So last week, I think it was last week, if not two weeks ago, I kind of went crazy at the art store and I took myself to Blick Art store um it's like this art supply store and they have everything from like acrylic paints to watercolor to color pencils um they have like this huge 50 percent off canvas sale so i bought a few and i have no idea what i'm going to paint yet or draw or whatever but i'm probably going to paint sunsets um just because it's easy and it's kind of like you can't really mess up with painting sunset right like you just mix the colors and make a gradient um so anyway i'll probably do some unboxing videos of my fun new art supplies but just to show you a sneak peek of what i treated myself to so the first thing that i bought was um this acrylic set and it's called Liquitex Basics Acrylic. So it's 48 colors. So look how beautiful. It's hard to see the color because I have um, a lamp to like for my vlog setup, but you can't see the actual true colors. Um, but this set it's for, it's good for beginners because if you're beginning um, with acrylic you don't want to invest in the expensive stuff like golden or what's the other like 
expensive paint brushes. I think it's called Windsor and Newton, like just an average paintbrush set should do and then average um, acrylic set just to get familiar with the textures and things like that. You don't need anything like fancy acrylic oils yet until you get to master level. So this will be fun. I can't wait to have fun with this set and see. Maybe I'll just make abstract art because you can't mess that up either, right? Anyway, so the next thing that I treated myself to is um, Prismacolor color pencils. So I've used Prismacolor before and compared to if, if you're into art or if you're an art student or you're an artist or whatever, you've used like these professional or semi-professional products before. Um, the colors just lay so nicely on the paper. It's not like, you know, kids color pencils. So like I've used Crayola before, which was a lot of fun when I was a kid. Um, <clears throat> but you'll see that the color kind of settles and then it turns waxy um, and then there's like this kind of this film on the color when it's when it's on your paper and it kind of reflects the light so with Prismacolor it does a little bit of that because it is a wax base um, but not like you know not like the Crayola although I love Crayola I think it's amazing um, especially for kids like fun super fun Crayola was like what I grew up on <laughs> um, but if you're starting off you also do not I kind of went all out and bought the 150 set which can be a little pricey um, I think retail price is like 300 something dollars but I got it on sale because Blick was having a crazy sale and I just couldn't contain myself because I've always wanted to own a Prismacolor set ever since design school like I had I think I had some color pencils but like I kind of had to buy them small sets at a time and then kind of create my my set you know my makeshift set but now as a grown adult at 33 years old I can finally afford a Prismacolor set and I'm just so so happy so happy with it so I can't wait to try it out um, another professional color pencil brand is I think it's pronounced Faber Castell or Faber Castell I may be totally wrong I think it's Faber Castell because there's two L's at the end instead of Faber Castle um, they are a little bit more expensive than the Prismacolor but their color remains true like even on paper after the color is settled on the paper and <clears throat> after after you lay the color on the pencil and then after some time usually the color kind of settles on the paper but because I think the Faber Castell are not wax based they don't have a film when it settles I think I've never used it but I did um test it out a little bit at the store and it did not have kind of like that wax film or gloss however these are great and these will do I also purchased a coloring book so super excited because in 2020 everyone's getting into coloring books right so back in the day I think a few years ago um, I started coloring books for adults because I just love coloring um, ever since five years old, when I was a five-year-old little girl. But everything, like the only coloring books they really had out there were just like the mandala designs, like with the, whatever you call it, like these floral designs, which I wasn't too crazy about. Um, they can be therapeutic and relaxing, but they're also kind of like frustrating at the same time. So I started it and I never finished it. However, now I have this gorgeous 
lovely, lovely book, coloring book um, that I found by accident on Amazon and I'm so happy that I bought it because first of all, it was only $14. I think, actually I got it for cheaper because it's $14.99 um, regular retail price and I think I got it for like $11 or 12 or something. And I was super ecstatic that like it arrived almost in mint condition. I'm kind of a book snob, so yeah, I will get into books later. So almost mint condition, there's kind of like this little streak here. I don't know if you can see it, but I have no idea what it is. It looks kind of like glue or something like, I don't know. But anyway, this thing is hardcover. It's beautiful and it's not mandala design so I'm excited for that. Um, I'm kind of picky about my coloring books too like I just have to love the illustrations and I've been eyeballing <clears throat> um, these Japanese coloring books that is on my wish list so as soon as the price drops I'm probably gonna get it. I might get two of each because I want to collect one and then I want to like have fun with the other one. So anyway, just a sneak peek of this book. So you can write your name here. This book belongs to and the pages like these designs are gorgeous and it's fun. It's like very whimsical and dreamy. So if you like flowers, you'll probably like this book. If you don't like flowers, you probably will not like this book. Um, some of my favorite pages, so like they have like a black background, which means that the colors will pop out even more. Super exciting. Um, I forgot how many pages are in this book. I want to say like, 48 pages or something like that. Hmm. It was in the product description on Amazon when I purchased it. I think it was 48. I don't know. These pages are not numbered. Ooh, and they have artist edition and postcards too, so that's exciting. Um, the artist, her name is Maria Trolley. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly, Maria Troll, T-R-O-L-L-E. So on the back here, sorry, that was backwards. I'll just read this out loud. It says, Twilight Garden, discover gardens brimming with lush flowers and woodland creatures in Maria Troll's debut collection, Twilight Garden. Pages burst to life as fancy florals, harvest, vignettes, and gentle animals float from page to page. Striking black end papers and white on black printed imagery dispersed throughout the pages sets this coloring book apart from the rest with its romantic sophistication. Maria Troll is a graphic designer and illustrator living in I cannot pronounce this, Tiro, Tiriso, outside Stockholm. Her passion for gardening acts as a thread to her art with plants, vegetables, and flowers offering daily inspiration, preferably from her own garden. So I'm really excited about this. I might gift some of my artwork, my coloring, coloring artwork, my coloring masterpieces to, to my mom or my friends if they like it. So that one is fun. And then I also got this 40 piece paintbrush set. Um, <clears throat> it's not it's not um, Windsor and Newton brush sets or anything like that, like not the legit professional 
super high quality and also super expensive brand. But this brand is called Benici Art and this was kind of, um, I got lucky with this, finding this on Amazon. I think they're sold out now. I checked on their website, they were sold out on their website after I got this. And I think on Amazon they were sold out, not sure when I bought this or after mine arrived. So this Benici Art, B-E-N-I-C-C-I, -C -C -I. it's um, 40 pieces and it comes in this cute little, I don't know what material it is, like this canvas bag that you could roll up and store. And then when you open up this canvas bag, you can see all of your brushes. Um, I think, I think the reds are hogs, hog hair brushes or whatever it's called. So this is like the really stiff material. Oh, I don't know if it's supposed to do that, but things are flying out of it. We'll see how this goes. I was super excited about this. Um, hmm, looks like it's snowing. So anyway, this is the hog, I think it's called hog brushes or hog hair, I'm not quite sure. Um, this one will give you like the really like hard brush strokes that you'll see on a canvas or paper. I wonder, what is this? Is this, is this supposed to be like that? At least none of the bristles are coming out. Maybe that's normal, I don't know never used it before um let's see there's a fan one doesn't do it quite as much so maybe it was just that one piece because it has like it's kind of like glued or something at the top I'm not sure and then these are the synthetic material so it did not flake off or it did not snow like the the other brush this one I think it's the material so this one is like the acrylic um, synthetic materials it's great for like really soft and fluid um, acrylic like if you want the water I have the water-based acrylic so if you want like really soft and fluid um, less texture I'll have to get to know these paintbrush names or sizes. I should know because I did go to design school, but I or art school, but I don't. Okay, so I know this one is called a fan, fan brush. That one's an easy one, so you can do like different textures. I think this is great for like painting trees. You kind of just tap, 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 and make the trees. Um, angle brush. And the best part is that they have these numbers. So you can remember which brush you used for what. Um, let's see. That's or 12 and then there's another set with the greens so there's three brush sets within this 40 piece brush set I think this one I forgot what material it's made of but it's probably great for watercolor Actually, I think the box tells you what material it's made of. I could find the box. Okay, so pony bristle brushes, nylon bristle brushes, and hog bristle brushes. I am 
by no means an artist, so I do not know my art supplies, but I will learn about them, okay? Anyway, so now we're going to get into books. Oh, and then after books, I have a really fun category, which is going to be stickers that I totally got into, which I'm super excited about. So I decided I'm going to um, do some journaling or just like write little notes to whoever or to myself. I got this cute little book. This one I got on sale from Anthropology. It's originally $18, $18 for a notebook, but I got it on sale for $12, $12. Still expensive for a notebook. Like it's not even that big. But you know, at least it's not like $50. But anyway, it's super cute because a little art page when you open up the book, just, I just like, I love these little moments where like you open it up and it's like a surprise. Same with fashion, like purses when like the inside pocket would have like a pattern or floral print or something, or like your jacket or your blazer, the inside would have like this nice lining inside but anyway so it's super simple um i want to use this for like my blog pieces where i could kind of just brainstorm a brief outline of what my bullet points are and some sources or references like inspiration or just um links like urls and things like that or ideas of what i want to post in terms of pictures or photos and then at the bottom here would be kind of like little details that um, like fun facts and things like that that I want to include or definitely mention in the blog, each blog post. So that would be fun or I can use this to just write little notes or whatever. I haven't used this book yet just because I'm such a freaking notebook hoarder and I have so many. So I've been going through all of my other notebooks first so I'll get to this one soon uh, okay so a coffee table book that I really love this one is called the bucket list places to find peace and quiet by Victoria Ward um, so this book I discovered at I first came across this book at um, you know what, I want to say it was the Four Seasons Spa, but actually, it has been on my wish list before I saw it in person at the Four Seasons Spa. So, this book was on my wish list already, but like, I just, I just can't just buy a book without really going through it and then like really falling in love with a book. So I wish list books forever until I finally get a chance to like browse it and kind of like see if I like the content and then I'll buy it because otherwise I'll feel so much resentment like oh I fell for the cover and the title and like then I open it up and then I flip through the pages and it's just like that's not what I expected but this was totally what I expected and it was so much more because this is like my little mini escape and like if i'm at home and i'm just it's i'm just kind of like hmm, want to get into my daydream mode and i want to like just go somewhere like drift away mentally because i can't physically go there <laughs> anyways i'm sipping my coffee or tea or whatever and i like to just browse through this cute little coffee table book it's not too big and let's see the price i think it was $35 so is not expensive. It's not like one of those like $120 coffee table books. Also beautiful, like I have a few other coffee table books like on my wish list that I absolutely would love to have, but it's like $200 or $260, whatever, and that's not happening. Um, okay, so we can browse through this little book. Um, just a couple of pages. These I like to like, I don't know if I'll ever make it to any of these places, but 
I like to believe that I will visit one of these places one day. Um, and these are like, this is like, if you want to kind of like read or browse something, but you don't want to commit to a novel. It doesn't really have like short stories or anything like that, but it has just like snippets of places, but it's like so much better than one of those, you know, like those um, top, I don't know, top 1000 places to see before whatever, must see sites or whatever, like, and it's just too gimmicky and too like, like, mm, I don't know, it's just not intriguing. Like the language that they use is just like, you feel like you're reading like some type of infomercial. So, but this, this is nice. Like it doesn't have like all of that jazz, I guess, distraction and stuff like, and it just has beautiful photos like this one here. Town of Sedona. When I was little, I used to collect National Geographic books or magazines. Um, just because I like to look at pictures of nature. <laughs> and this was like before cable. So like we did not have the National Geographic channel or we didn't have like our planet or like none of that. I love documentaries. Like before cable so like what are you what are you gonna watch like we had broadcast television which was like abc news and like sports and whatever so i used to collect um national geographic magazines from like thrift stores or like from random people <laughs> like neighbors or sometimes um i would like find them online so i would purchase them when I was little. Oh, actually, I want to read this one. The town of Sedona. Sedona has long attracted spiritual seekers who believe the area is full of vortexes that channel Earth's energetic power, a place where you can tap into the frequencies of the universe. It is considered to be North America's new age capital. And so the town has more than its fair share of crystal shops aura reading, psychics, and spiritual classes catering to the market. The real beauty of the place, however, lies outside of town, where the striking rust-colored sandstone formations and soaring blue skies induce awe and inspire even the most skeptical of individuals. Cute, right like that could have been like three coffee sips and then you're done you could you could just close the book put it back on your coffee table and then move on with your day all right and then this is another one of my favorite books it's called the travels by marco polo i think this book was actually written by marco polo but then of course it was translated because um i don't think he wrote in english but anyway, so yes, translated and with an introduction and notes by Nigel Cliff. This is published by Penguin Books. Um, so this book is broken down into chapters. Basically, it's regions of different parts of the world. The first chapter is the Middle East and then the Road to Cathay. Is that backwards on on your end i don't know how to like flip my camera um kublai, kublai khan cannot pronounce that from beijing to bengal from beijing to Guangzhou, from china to india india the arabian sea northern regions and tartar wars um there's a little chronology these are like this would be like the book for people who love um, history and travel and things like that. Yeah, I love watching documentaries and like I would um, kind of cross reference them. Okay, I need to charge 
my iPad because it's telling me there's only 5% battery. So let me do that right now before the battery dies on me. <sighs> so awkward. Now I have to get underneath this desk and plug this thing in. That was so funny because why you saw her like my eyes is popping up. <sighs> my bedroom is a mess. I need to clean it because I ordered so many things from Amazon and like I just got shipments after shipment and boxes after boxes. So I have like tons of cardboard boxes. How do I plug this thing in? Oh. Okay, that should work. All right, and then this other book, The Travel Writer's Way. Um, this book is more of like a writing guide. So at one point, which could still happen, it's still a possibility. I thought of becoming a travel writer. Maybe I could travel to these different places that I'm reading about and researching about and just like, share little stories because I love, again, it's like connecting with people and like just learning about people's lifestyles and um, just kind of like get out of my context, um, like my daily life. So here in the US, you know, we have a certain culture or lifestyle and until you travel to another place or meet people who are of a different background from you is like, I would say you have not experienced life because it's just, it's like a very humbling experience where like, it just makes you appreciate so many things, um, like the culture and the tradition of different people and their lifestyle, how they live a certain way, their values, and it makes you like, reflect back on your own life like sometimes like I wonder how come I have not lived like this before or sooner or like you can incorporate certain things into your life or like it just changes your perspectives and it it makes me realize that like oh these things that I thought were really important are actually minute like they're not that important compared to these other things so like it just makes you like a more thoughtful person i think when you travel but anyway so i've always dreamed of being a writer um i took some creative writing courses in high school and college and i attempted to learn french for two semesters that you know, French is a little difficult. I, I studied Spanish for two years. So like I would say conversational beginner span Spanish. I almost said Spanglish. Um, I could have conversational Spanish, but then I stopped practicing my Spanish. So I kind of lost it. But I think that if I got back into learning Spanish, I, I would probably be able to pick it up quickly and then get back up to speed. And then if I continue learning, then maybe I'll probably be pretty good at Spanish. I don't know. Um, what else? I tried to learn a few other languages too. At one point, I thought I was going to learn like Ur Urdu. I can't pronounce it. It's like such a random um, language. Like I don't have any Pakistani friends, but yeah, that never happened because it's a really difficult language to learn. Um, I also tried to learn Arabic, which was also very difficult. Um, I did have friends who spoke Arabic and like, I just, I love listening to music in other languages. Um, so I wanted to understand the meaning of the lyrics. Kind of difficult to learn. I might get back into that. 
Um, right now I'm learning Turkish, so that's going well. I actually have finished a semester um, in Turkish and it's been fun. Like we have this online class and everyone in the class is like really friendly and nice and like kind of funny. Um, we kind of like clicked as a little family, like just, I think we bonded over like traveling and food and things like that. So it's a fun class. There's going to be another semester of the Turkish class, but unfortunately I will not be joining because my work schedule just does not allow me the time to join. Um, the class will meet during the time that I will be working. And this book here, Footnotes from the World's Greatest Bookstores by Bob Eckstein. So I think I found this book at a thrift store. Um, it's still in great condition, which I'm super excited about. And I found a book about bookstores in a bookstore. Like how amazing is that? Like in an old bookstore. Um, I mean, where else would you find a book besides bookstores? Well, I guess like thrift stores and online, like Amazon and stuff. I don't know. But anyway, it's super cute because the table of contents, like it just has um, names of bookstores and like the location of where the bookstores are at. So this is also a great book for anyone who loves books and for anyone who like likes to travel. Um, I got this book for probably less than $5, still in brand new condition. And it's just super cute. Like I think someone drew all of these Cute little bookstores like they're not photographs it's like someone painted or drew or illustrated them super cute right there's like a little about the bookstore um oh bob Eckstein. i said someone so he drew he's the author and the writer and a cartoonist for some reason, I thought that he was like just the editor for this book. It's super, just super cute. So one day, if I ever travel the world and go to these places, I would probably try to find these bookstores. This is in China, I think. Nanjing, China. It's called the Library Avant-Garde. So in this one, to find library avant-garde, book lovers must drive on a mysterious road that leads, as if in the James Bond movie, down a hill and into an enormous underground bunker, the site of a former bomb shelter. The space later became a parking garage before it became the world's largest hidden bookshop at 43,000 square feet. Lines form outside to enter the shop every day. Once inside, you continue to follow a double yellow striped road to the main room of Library Avant-Garde, where you will find 300 chairs to read in, a coffee shop, an event space, a replica of Rodin's The Thinker, and literally miles of books. Ooh, this is cool. This is a floating secondhand bookshop in England. It's called Word on the Water. It's like a little boat with a bookstore in it. Um, so Word on the Water is London's only floating secondhand bookstore. In 2015, it was finally granted a mooring at King's Cross Granary Square. The 100-year-old Dutch book barge hosts poetry slams, book readings, and live music events on the roof stage on top of the boat. 
Stephen Fry and Russell Brand are among the well-known who have been on board. So yeah, pretty neat book that I love because I love books. Um, what other fun things do I have today? Let's see. So I also love journals. No, sometimes they get a little cheesy, but I'm I'm a little cheesy too. Um, so this first journal, this is a guided journal that I found at Target, and I think it was like ten dollars or twelve dollars, something like that. But it's super cute because first of all, look at the cover. It has like this shiny rose gold font this fun design it's not too big um you could toss this in your purse and i don't know carry it with you on the go it has like these cute little quotes in the book throughout the whole entire journal um this one says life brings simple pleasures to us every day it is up to us to make them wonderful memories by kathy allen and then in between the quotes, there's like these little sections that you could write your journal entries. So this one says, it can be easy to overlook the smaller things that bring sunshine to our day-to-day -day lives. Use this space to record every good moment or thing that you experienced today. So I got this book because like, um, I wanted to just keep practicing like more positive thinking and like just being grateful like living a more grateful life and maybe sharing some prompts with other people to kind of get them to like inspire them to think about their life too and things like that or just like things to talk about um like this one here it says maybe happiness didn't have to be about the big sweeping circumstances maybe it was about stringing together a bunch of small pleasures and the quote is by Anne Brashars I have no idea who that is but I should google that um, quote and who she is and then on this page next to the quote it says think of objects that you use on a daily basis like your phone a favorite mug even a doorway write down why you appreciate these items so like these little prompts kind of like inspire me to get in touch with myself and like think of a moment or something like so minute that you would not think is significant. Um, but like, not like really, really think about it, but kind of like, hmm, I never thought of it, but now that I am thinking about it, like it starts to like, inspire you to like appreciate little moments and things like that because what is life without moments okay so that book i got that journal i got from target um this one here i also got from target it was actually right next to this one as you can see probably at the same you know shelf or aisle in the journal and planner and notebook aisle at Target. This one is gorgeous also with the flowers. So if you love flowers, you'll probably like this journal. If you do not like flowers, then hopefully you'll find another journal that you like. This one, this one is a really sweet journal. It's called My Beautiful Life. I don't know if that's cheesy, but I like to have a beautiful life and I like to see my life as beautiful and like be grateful um just just be grateful for my day so this is also a guided journal um this is great for self-discovery and reflection which is all me i am totally about that um same as the other book so this has quotes throughout the book also and some artwork this one says, great work is done by people who are not afraid to be great by Fernando Flores. And the page next to it for this journal prompt, it says, who are the people you admire most and why? Okay, and then here it says, 
I felt my lungs inflate with the onrush of scenery, air, mountains, trees, people. I thought, this is what it is to be happy by Sylvia Plath. As you know, she is an author or poet, I believe. Isn't it gorgeous? Um, this prompt says, what places in nature make you feel most at peace? And then there's like this little checklist. Sunny beaches, snow-covered mountains, quiet forests, warm deserts, charming city parks, and then two blanks that you can fill in. When was the last time you were in nature? So again, these questions kind of like make you think of like, you know, nothing, nothing deep is just, just a moment to reflect back on and then like slow down. And I think that we have a habit of like thinking like, oh, what do I need to do next and plan my day? What do I have to do today? Chores, tasks, whatever, priorities, work tomorrow next week i have this deadline bills are due so like i've always been like on the go and ever since like in college like always on the go and it stressed me out so much and i never freaking saw anything wrong with it until like it just got to a point where i was just burnt out and then my counselor my college counselor just said you need to drop one of these one or two of these things from your plate you can't do all of them so I just I had to work less hours and it sucked because I had to pay for myself through college but you know it is what it is um okay so this planner here was a little expensive I think it was like $40 um, because you know, I love planners. This one is like, it's very well made. It has this, um, it's spiral bound, but it's like very intact. And the cover is, it's probably like some type of cardboard material, cardboard like material inside, covered with um, canvas or linen like material. I have no idea what it is. Um, but anyway, so I love this planner because it's just so simple, like it has, and it has like little cheat sheets for, um, it's all about like self-care and wellness. So here it says the self-care planner, achieve more and live better through radical self-care. I have no idea what that means because I don't know how self-care can be radical, but anyway, so the features of this planner um you can write down your goals things that you're grateful for so gratitude practicing gratitude meal planning track your fitness um sleep tracker and a mood tracker okay so just some things in this planner which i think is worth what you pay for maybe not forty dollars but it's very well put together in terms of the content so here it shows um how to use your planner the self-care plan sorry that is backwards um so every month there's a monthly spread and a monthly reflection and monthly intention so you set your goals and you reflect you set your goals for the upcoming month and you reflect back on the previous month. Um, and then setting intentions, I guess, is like, like not just the goals, but how you're going to achieve those goals. Um, like telling yourself what you're going to do specifically, like what habits are you going to incorporate in your daily routine to reach your goals. Um, every week, so there's also a weekly page for you to track your progress throughout the week and then daily so daily would be um, practicing the daily gratitude writing down like your to do and your schedule um, tracking your water intake your meals your exercise for the day 
And then at the end of the planner, I think the one I got here is a six month planner. Uh, so there's an end assessment. So at the end, um, there's a full like self assessment for looking back in the past six months. And then um, there's also some bonus. So this one is like extra credit bonus. It's the monthly self care challenges. So just like bonus tips and things that you can do um, to really, really get on your game with the self care. And as all good planners have, there's always beautiful quotes. So this one says, incorporating self-care every day helps to serve as an armor to protect the energy that we need in order to survive and thrive by Dr. Maria Barata. Document the moments you feel most in love with yourself, what you're wearing, who you're around, what you're doing, recreate and repeat. This quote is by Warsan Shire. I also have no idea who that is, so I should Google that. Uh, so this self-care plan includes a self-care assessment, building a self-care map, set recurring self-care acts. Um, so I guess like self-care habits, create your vision of balance. So I think this is like your vision board of how you see yourself in the next six months, um, setting your goals and designing your ideal routine. So I think this is great for like, um, if you really, really wanna take self-care seriously, like it's not just, oh, I drank enough water today or I'm eating healthy, but then if you're not tracking your progress every day, you can easily slip away of like, you know, I ate healthy for a couple of weeks and good enough or I'm gonna get, like fall back into whatever unhealthy eating habits or like staying up late and stuff like that. But like, I don't know, if you have like really strong willpower, you probably don't need a planner for this. But for people like me, like I think when you're starting a new habit, especially you do want to do your best and really really track yourself like track your habits um if you're starting a new um uh, habit and you know that like you might fall out of it so planners are great for that um but for me i'm just a freaking planner nerd so i love to check things off and write things down and like it's kind of like it makes me feel proud that I committed to something and then I completed it. Um, so I'm gonna be working on that. And what I also love about this planner, I could really get into this, is that there's different categories here. Like it's not just a planner of your nine to whatever, nine to five or like to 8 p.m. or whatever. Wake up, drink water, have a healthy meal, do your exercise, do your to-do list, whatever. But this one, like, it makes you really think about all of the different categories in your life. Uh, a lot of times, like when you think of self-care, of course you think of eating healthy and you think of um, exercise and things like that. And maybe like there's different plans for like tracking your mood and stuff like that. But I haven't really found anything that had like a section for um, getting in touch with your spiritual side, like just reflecting. I don't know, maybe there are, but I haven't found one that had all of those in one planner. So this one has that. Um, there's a section for social, so you can write down your social goals or intentions for that month, I guess, and like your spiritual um, goals for that month or intentions. And it's just like a good reminder of like, for me, I like to go back to what I wrote because at one point in time, I committed to myself and I said, yeah, I'm gonna do that. And if I am not doing that, then I'm gonna hold myself accountable to like, okay, well, I did say I was gonna do that. So why am I not doing that? Um, so it's just a way to hold yourself accountable. 
So it's really neat. This is one of the pages from the monthly review. And it's super simple. Um, I kind of like the fact that it's very straightforward and it's like not too complicated. The font is really simple and clean. You can easily see everything and like, although I do love the other two um, journals with the artwork, really fun and beautiful. Um, but I also love this planner too, that it doesn't have artwork because it's like, it's a different aesthetic that I really do appreciate. So this was a really beautiful self-care planner. And again, it was like $40, so it's a little bit on the pricier side, um, but absolutely love it. Okay, so this little notebook here, I got as a gift from someone special, and this was from Turkey. Um, I, I've always kept it on my shelf. I haven't used it yet because I, I wanted to save it for something special. Um, so this one I have a plan for, but I can't tell you because it's a secret. Um, but it's just a little journal with like, this beautiful artwork here on the cover and a magnet, little magnet piece. And the pages are blank, nothing inside, but I could see like some really beautiful notes in here, like maybe some artwork. It has like this little bookmark bookmarker here i guess um and this artwork on this cover was inspired by a tile panel so i love tiles i love tiles and i love textiles like carpets rugs kilims um tapestries like the patterns like the weaving patterns and the artistry in creating this piece beautiful fabric piece made of like different threads woven into a specific way to create patterns like it's one thing to draw things and sketch things and fill in the lines with color or to even layer watercolor or layer paint or ink or whatever it is color pencil but it's a whole nother level when you're weaving textiles um, or like making more 3d 3d crafts like pottery and things like that or like that process of like making a tile and then you have to i don't know what it's called where like um you put like a glaze on it to protect the artwork on the tile and like you put it into the burner or whatever um but anyway so this is a beautiful little notebook and again, the artwork was inspired by a tile panel in the library of Sultan Mahmud I. Um, so the library of Sultan Mahmud I built beyond the south aisle of Hagi Hagia Sophia, Hagia Sophia is one of the finest structures of its age with its covered doors with mother of pearl inlay and its elegant tiles. On one of the tile panels, panels of the library are depicted branches in full bloom. So I guess that is this tile. Love, love the artwork. Okay, what else? So I decided that I was going to start collecting stickers and stamps just because I love collecting things. Um, so I got these stamps from they're from different countries. I don't know where this one is from, but this one is beautiful. It's unfortunate that they got stuck together by accident through the shipping process, which at first I was really upset about, but what can I do? Uh, this one is from Mongolia. I don't know, it's just, I guess I just love like different places, like foreign places. I have no idea where this one is from. And I have no idea what language it's in. Okay, 
Okay. Uh, this one's from, these are from Cambodia. Oh, there's three from Cambodia. Oh, there's four. So plenty. So there's three from Cambodia. And then this is the fourth one from Cambodia. I lied, there's five. So there's a lot of stamps from Cambodia that I have. Um, so Cambodia is actually where my, my family is from. My mother's from Cambodia, my grandmother. Um, my father's from Vietnam. My mom's mixed. Basically Southeast Asia. And for the most part, I think. So these are fun. Uh, I also ordered some stickers. I have no idea what I'm going to do with the stickers or stamps, but since I'm a hoarder, I like to collect things. So I'll figure out what to do with them. Okay, speaking of stickers. So I ordered this really fun sticker and chill book from Amazon. I discovered this by accident while I was browsing and looking for coloring books. Um, this one is called Sticker and Chill Personal Spaces. And basically it's, so what is Sticker and Chill? It's like an alternative to coloring. Um, so there's like different scenes in the book that you can create and the stickers are repositionable. So you can, it's, it's like the perfect thing for people who are like afraid of committing to things like me sometimes. Sometimes like I just, I just want to change my mind. Like what if I want to put a mug somewhere on a picture and then I decide like, nope, I don't like that mug there. And then I just want to like unstick it and then stick that mug somewhere else. So it's great for that. Um, so this one here, Let's see the first scene here. So it's kind of stuck. So um, it came in and then when it arrived and then I opened up the first page, like all of the stickers kind of like stuck to the other side, but I found a little hack. So what you do is you press down really hard, like smooth everything else and then just like run your fingers across through it. So the stickers will actually stick to where it's supposed to stick. Once I open this, you'll see what I'm talking about. So the problem with this was that some people, when they flipped open the page, the stickers were kind of sticking to the scene. So this is the empty scene that it comes with. And these are the stickers that suggested for that scene. But really, you can mix and match and use stickers from the other scenes or from another one of the books. Um, I bought two, two of the series. So I have the personal spaces and I have the, I think it's called Wanderlust, like the travel series. But they also have like succulents and crystals. And then they also have, um, what's the other one, like flowers, floral theme. Okay. So this one is like an empty kitchen counter and shelf, I guess. And then you can stick whatever you want on it. It's kind of fun. Um, like, let's see, let's stick this banana to the seam because I feel like the banana should go there. So you just peel it off. Banana, uh, can you see that? cute little banana. There's two bananas. And then where should we put this banana? You just stick it anywhere. I'm going to put it right here. Cute, right? And then you can put whatever else you want on it. There's like cappuccino mugs and coffee makers. I don't know, bowls, tiles, teas, muffins. Um, Let's see, let's, let's do a cappuccino poster. That looks kind of fun. So, oops, so cappuccino.
chino poster. And let's take this, I don't know, should it go on this wall? No, I don't like it on that wall. Actually, I do, I do like it on that wall. Okay, I guess we'll, we'll stick it on that wall for now. The best part is, if you don't like it, you can peel it off and stick it somewhere else. So, let's see. Hmm... Maybe I want this like up here instead. Cute, right? So the personal spaces is fun. Um, but I don't think it's my favorite one. I think I'm more of the Wanderlust book. There's also the flower book, which I cannot wait to get. And the succulent and crystals book which is like a little whimsical but kind of cool um so this one this was a scene that i fell in love with when i saw this sticker and chill book because it's just so like it's just so me mm, like it's like the waterfall in the background why why would you not want to be where there is a waterfall and I love picnics, so like so being surrounded with all of your food, like, I don't know, fruits and yogurt and parfait and whatever with your, with your besties, or maybe these are like sisters or three versions of me. I have no idea what this might symbolize, but I just love this scene. And this scene, the suggested stickers are here. So there's like flowers, like picnic items. There's a cute little squirrel. Um, there's a sloth. So actually I'm gonna find a place for a sloth. And in the Wanderlust book, um, there's this like cute little suitcase that you can pack. You can toss your sticker laptop in there. You could toss a cat in there. I don't know, that's a little weird. I have no idea why there's a cat in this scene. Um, face cream, hair oil, a map, umbrella. Okay, well those are like normal items. I still have no idea why there's a cat. I hope no one puts a cat in a suitcase. Maybe the cat is supposed to be like outside, like curling next to the suitcase or something. Yeah. Okay, so what else? Let's see what other scenes they have. This one's cute. It's like a little, it's like a little boho chic tent. So uh, this one, so when I flipped open the book or the page, the stickers kind of got stuck to it. So now I have to unstuck them, which is a little annoying. Um, but to prevent that, the best thing to do is like, is that this page? I think, yeah. The best thing to do is like to really, really press down on the stickers so they actually stick to where they're supposed to stick. Okay, so hopefully that works. Let's try it again. Nope, that did not work. So the stickers are still stuck to the other side. So, but luckily they're repositionable so you can just remove them and stick them somewhere else. This is a cute little candle so I'm gonna put it, I don't know, where should I put this candle? Maybe on the sand somewhere? I might do a video of just stickers like me positioning these stickers on the scene and I will not be chatting it'll just be music in the background I think that'll be kind of relaxing okay what is this thing I have no idea oh it's like a little dream catcher cute okay so let's put this little dream catcher like above the bed They have a little bread basket, little book, little candle. 
a dream catcher. And again, you can use um, stickers from the other scenes. You can like mix and match. So the fun little thing, fun little activity for grown-ups who are actually kids at heart. Okay. So anyway, that was a long first video. Um, I did not expect it to be one hour long, but I had so much fun going <laughs> through all of my books and like my art supplies and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, this is like this episode actually turned out to be like um, what is it like in grade school when kids bring like their favorite toy or something and then like oh show and tell it's kind of like a show and tell episode wasn't it i didn't intend for it to be like that um i thought i would just like introduce myself and kind of like go through some of the things that i like and kind of introduce um have an introduction to what my vlog is going to be about but i just kind of go off on this tantrum i can actually talk to myself does that make me crazy anyway so if you made it this far to the end of the video, either you're crazy or I'm crazy, I don't know. <laughs> Was it fun to watch? Um, I'm sorry that the the camera, I couldn't figure out how to like flip it or whatever, so like the texts were backwards sometimes when I was showing the books, but I did read them out loud, so no worries with that. See here, I think it's backwards on your end. Maybe there's a way to fix that, I really don't know. Um, but if you are inspired to either get into journaling, I, I don't know if it's cheesy, but I like it. Um, or if you're inspired to, to have like nostalgic bookstore memories, because um, especially now during COVID, like we can't really go to bookstores and cafes and stuff like that, so like, it's just become more precious to me. Like no, no libraries. Libraries were my favorite places when I was a little girl and I can't go to the library now. Um, or if you're inspired to <clears throat> get into some creative writing, <clears throat> this was a great one. Actually, I never really talked about this book, right? It's, it's kind of like a writing guide, but specifically for travel writing. Um, so the different chapters, it kind of walks you through like how to get started on your process. Um, like here, chapter five, shaping the story or talk to me. So it walks you through this process of like how to develop a story that connects with your reader. Um, here, chapter nine, hooking the reader. So in every great story, there's like a little bit of like drama or tension or something that's kind of like challenging so chapter nine get into trouble and it it walks you through um <clears throat> how to like kind of create that scene and build up not just visually um describing the scene but kind of like a little bit deeper of like what the challenge is and there's always a happy ending right so because what what great travel story does not end in in a happy ending um chapter 11 stay in love so this is this chapter is about um i think this book kind of like goes through this process of like for travel writing specifically imagery is so important and it kind of like helps the reader get into the scene they can picture being there they can like they can smell the scents, they can hear the sounds of like a bustling city or of a market or a bazaar, um, or they can feel like the anxiety of something like mysterious and unfamiliar. So that uneasiness or like that familiarity or the unfamiliar, unfamiliarity, like all of those aspects in writing are just magical like i think I, I love writing i would probably be a good writer i don't know what do you think um let's see what else is in here the first chapter make a friend 
oh that's cute the first chapter the first chapter is describing the world so again this is travel writing describing the world take me with you so i think this chapter is all about like painting the picture um the visuals description of a place like anything nostalgic that kind of like connects the reader to the place and then the second chapter is make a friend so even if you're you know when you find yourself as a reader out of place but like there's nothing to like to have that emotional connection like the the make a friend part is that friend that you just met someone new when you have a connection or making a friend like you're at this unfamiliar place but then there's someone who's like your tour guide or a family who is hosting your stay or something like that so like you start to find commonalities with the people at a particular place so it kind of like kind of brings you in closer to them let's see what chapter three is about chapter three become a hero describing the world actually i have no idea what chapter three is about let me see if i could skim through become a hero mm. i think this one is about kind of like building the conflict of a story or like introducing the reader to a conflict so that there is a story because otherwise you'll have just a place and then that's it but a place with some familiarity like the nostalgia and a place that has some excitement and unfamiliarity and a place that also has like a trusted friend or someone that you trust so that you can connect with and then there's a conflict and then there's the drama and then there's the hero so it's kind of like a story i guess and then you build up to that climax, like all create the scene, the setting, climax, and then a resolution. Stuff, stuff that you learn in elementary school, but like in the style of a travel writer. Really lovely book. I can't wait to get through that because I just want to tell like amazing stories of places and people one day if I ever become a travel writer. And then here again, um, this was a really beautiful book if you are inspired to kind of like um find a little moment of peace and retreat when you're enjoying your coffee your tea this is a great book to have um whether or not you plan on traveling but just kind of like just browse through it's kind of therapeutic that beautiful pictures and you learn a little bit about history and it's not a big commitment because you do not have to read a whole entire chapter or a novel or anything like that. Um, you literally read like one paragraph and then you kind of like, oh, you know, that was nice. It's, it's like, it takes you away from your current life and context. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't give you like the story like of the people and things like that is just of of a place and like what's the nature of that place or what's significant about it so it's a little bit different from this other book that i have which i did not talk about um this one is called sahara by michael palin so this book is i think it's a little bit older it was not published recently but it's still a great book um, let's see, this one was published in, uh, if I could find the year, and I cannot. Mm, nope, nope, I have no idea, I can't find it. But this one is about a very specific region or part of the world, and like this one really does get into the stories of the people who live there and lifestyle um yeah i think it's really beautiful this is a different this is definitely not one of those like your 1000 must see places before you die or something like that type of book but this one I mean, it's not a novel, but it's more kind of like little journal entries and snippets, like 
day 33 um i think the writer just went day by day like recording this in his diary um and he has photos of like the people that he spent his time with it's really beautiful um there's another book that i really want to get which i don't have yet the author is i think it's peter peter bowles no paul bowles i think and he wrote like a memoir of the places that he went to it's more it's kind of like a novel style or memoir i guess so there's not really any pictures in it um i do want to read that okay so what else and then this one here again the coloring book that's really gorgeous and the fact that it's hardcover just makes this book beautiful and i do want to get into japanese coloring books um i think the japanese art style is a little bit different from like western art coloring books where i find like western artists or the western i don't want to categorize or generalize this um the artists who illustrate coloring books in the u.s or like western style art have more like thicker lines and it just kind of distracts me too much when i go in and color so i like the really thin lines that i find in this artist and i think she is swedish i'm not sure um still the west but you know not like maybe a different style i don't know if west western art is a fair way to refer to it but definitely the japanese style like japanese art is very unique like the the lines are thinner and more like delicate so when i go in and color i can the lines are not distracting to me but i think i think the coloring books were intended to have thick lines so that when people go in and color they can see clearly where the lines are um because it's like a therapeutic activity but for me i guess um since i went to art school and design school the just the aesthetics of the thinner lines in coloring books are more appealing to me um okay and again the prisma color set so i got the 150 but they definitely have smaller sets like i think there's like maybe 24 or 48 or something like that um color pencils so you definitely do not have to get the 150 but i'm just a hoarder so i collect i want like the most of everything um they also have like watercolor pencils which i also have somewhere watercolor pencils where are they oh this one so i have the 36 watercolor water soluble color pencils so this one you would go in and color in like you would a color pencil because it is a pencil but so these color pencils but you would go in with a brush a wet brush just with water and then go over the colors and it would give you that watercolor effect and actually it will kind of intensify the color a little bit wherever you put a dab of water it would be more vibrant um, but if you go in with more color or not color actually I, I think you can still layer it with like going back and forth as long as if your paper dries and then you can go back and add more color pencil just be careful about like the paper tearing because it's wet so it's like more fragile i guess like the the paper material um or you can go back with more color or water on the brush but i think that would make the color less vibrant if that's the effect that you're going for 
Okay, and then we have again the Liquitex Basics Acrylic Set. These are water based acrylics, so they're not oil, um, so they will dry faster than oil. Um, and it's a good like beginner set if you want to try out acrylic. And because they're not oil, like you don't have to wait so long for it to dry. And they're also more affordable than the acrylic oils. Um, I've never worked with acrylic oil, so I have no idea how they dry and how to manipulate that um, acrylic. But I do know that with acrylic paint, typically um, you can mix your colors and you can mix your colors to create your own colors, obviously. Um, I don't know if they layer in the same way as color pencil do because some of these colors are more opaque and some are less opaque. And I think on each, I think on each tube, I think it tells you if it's opaque or not, semi-opaque or or not, things like that. Okay, so that was fun. Um, I have no idea what or when my next video episode will be, but maybe I'll think of something. And. I can't believe I talked for one and a half hours. Oh my gosh. I literally talked for one and a half hours. So I'm going to go now. Bye.